So in this video, we'll talk about the immunosuppressive medications we use in rheumatologic disease. It's going to be a general idea about these medications and an easy review for the exam, basically. So in rheumatology, we can divide the immunosuppressive medications into two main categories. The first category is steroids. And the other one is disease-modifying anti-rheumatic medications. Now let's talk about the steroids. I'm going to just mention what you need to know to understand. So the body produces around 20 milligrams of cortisone every day. Now, from practical perspective, it's good to know what is the strength of the steroids that we use on a daily basis, basically. So if we have prednisone as the core steroid we have two weaker than prednisone hydrocortisone and cortisone and we have three steroids that are stronger than prednisone first one is methylprednisone and stronger than that is dexamethasone and the strongest is betamethasone now if you want to take it one step further and compare the strength of these steroids together we assume prednisone five milligrams here it's equivalent to 20 milligrams of hydrocortisone and 25 milligrams of cortisone. Also, 5 milligrams of prednisone equivalent to 4 milligrams of methylprednisone and around 1 milligram of dexamethasone and 0.5 milligram of betamethasone, which is 10 times stronger than prednisone. Now, let's move on to and talk about the DMARDs. So, the DMARDs are composed of two categories non-biologics and the biologics. Non-biologic means they are chemically derived and they like you to know about which one of them is safe in pregnancy and two are safe hydroxychloroquine and sulfasalazine. Now let's talk about the first and most commonly used one is methotrexate what you need to know about it. So it's the most effective one and that's why we use it. And the other thing is it does not go to the spine. So anything with spinal arthritis like ankylosing spondylitis, methotrexate does not treat that. Now important to know the side effects, bone marrow suppression and hepatotoxicity and mucositis. Second one we want to talk about is the hydroxychloroquine, which is the second most common used one, I would say. So it causes retinopathy. And this retinopathy usually at high doses and in patients who take it for a long time. So these patients have also to check their eyes every year with the ophthalmologist. Now it has a very long half-life, around 45 days. Next medicine we want to talk about is sulfasalazine. A couple of things you need to know. It causes bone marrow suppression and transaminitis. And the most important thing is Dress syndrome associated with sulfasalazine. They might ask you about that, where the patient takes the medicine and after that, in a month or so, he will develop rash with eosinophilia. Next one is leflunomide. Leflunomide has similar activity and effectiveness to methotrexate. I call it methotrexate body. And the side effects are a little bit different. They have hypertension as a side effect and also peripheral neuropathy. Next one is the cyclophosphamide. The most important thing you want to know is that it is secreted through the kidney, precipitates in the urinary bladder, and that's why it causes hemorrhagic cystitis. Now, to prevent this, we give the patients what we call MISNA, and that binds to cyclophosphamide and decreases its toxicity. Now, the last one is azathioprine. It causes bone marrow suppression and increases the toxicity of allopurinol if they are administered at the same time. Let's go and talk about the biologics. Few things about them. First, you need to test for TB before giving any. And they are safe in pregnancy compared to non-biologics. You can't give live vaccines while the patient's taking any of these. And unfortunately, the insurance won't approve them until you try the non-biologics first 
otherwise we will use these all, all the time as a first line. What you need to know is the mechanism of action of these medicines and their names. So the first one is T cell inhibitors. The one that you need to know is abatacept. And we have also the B cell inhibitor. The one that you need to know is CD20 inhibitor, which is rituximab. Then we have the interleukin-1 inhibitor, which is the anakinra. That's mainly used in gout, in resistant gout, and it's like third line treatment. Now, the last category is the TNF inhibitors. Again, you need to check for TB before giving any. And one potential question is they increase the risk of non-melanoma skin cancer. Now, if we have the TNF alpha molecule right here, it's involved in the inflammatory response. We have two types of medicine. The first type is in the form of antibodies, and these are infliximab and adalimumab. And the second type is just a fusion protein, a decoy protein that can attach to TNF and inhibits it. And this is the etanercept. And by inhibiting the TNF, we are inhibiting the inflammatory response in the body and so the autoimmunity. I'm focusing on this mechanism because they like to ask about the TNF inhibitors and how to differentiate antibodies versus the fusion proteins. And by this, we finish this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. I'll see you in the next one.